Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to the stream. Um, today is the final, finally the day that we are drawing Blue Cat together, and I couldn't be more excited. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and something I've just wanted to do for a while. Um, so, as you're watching this, please bust out a sketching pad, your drawing tablet, whatever you use to draw, and draw along. Um, in this video, I'm going to go through how to draw Blue Cat, the history of Blue Cat, maybe the right way, the wrong ways to draw Blue Cat, and just overall have a fun time drawing Blue Cat. Um, so where I wanted to start first is kind of giving just a tiny bit of history to Blue Cat. Blue Cat is a character that I've drawn for over 10 years now, and as you can see here, has gone through a lot of different variation. When I first started drawing Blue Cat, it started off as just a sketch, a sketch on a page. It was more closer to a cat, it had a tail, had a coat to it, um, and it really didn't have the color blue yet. It was really just a cat. It wasn't Blue Cat yet. Um, and as I started drawing this character, it slowly gained the color blue. It its ears started to get more round. I started drawing it a little bit simple. Um, and then when I got to the cartoonist is where I really started to take the character Blue Cat and start evolving on it. And it kind of devolved, as you can see in the third version of Blue Cat, where it became a little bit chubbier. Uh, it had a little white belly, stubby arms, and a tiny, tiny face. Um, and I drew that for a little while before I came back to what I think is the closest version of the, the newer Blue Cat, uh, the middle one. And that's where I started drawing Blue Cat, closer to how we know him today, with some subtle differences. As you can see, Blue Cat's face is, the mouth is below the eyes, there's really no roundness to the head, um, and he's kind of just overall very flat, although he still had a tail. Um, and then really from there to the next one was just some subtle differences where I started to draw digitally more and I, I took the eyes of Blue Cat and started putting it further down, closer to the mouth. Um, he became a little bit taller, still had the tail, no clothes. Now there was this weird in-between time where I stopped doing the cartoonist and this was around 2019. And I still drew Blue Cat as a personal thing, something I wanted to do. And this is where Blue Cat is a lot closer to how we know him today, where he has the yellow shirt with the rectangle, the green pants, and some red shoes, um, although he still had a tail. And when I brought Blue Cat to the cartoonist, or sorry, when I brought Blue Cat to Cool Cats, this is where we got rid of the tail, made his head a lot rounder, and really started to dial in on some of those features. So that was just a tiny bit of history, and we'll go into it further and further as we do this tutorial. But first things first, I think we gotta go over to, go over to Photoshop and begin drawing. Um, but to briefly explain what we're gonna do in this, I'm gonna start drawing Blue Cat and really explain how I draw him. And then later in the video, for anyone watching live, I'll start answering questions to anything maybe I didn't clarify. Um, and this video will live on YouTube so anybody can watch it after the live stream and use it as a resource to reference when you want to draw Blue Cat. So I hope you enjoy this and let's get started. As I was laying this out, I wanted to think about what were the best steps to explain how to draw Blue Cat. And I thought it was best if I actually drew the OG version of Blue Cat before we started to develop them further and further as Cool Cats went along, really providing a lot of polish and working out some of the kinks. But I think it's more important to start with where we started with Cool Cats, and that's the left-facing version of Blue Cat, um, since this is how I drew him most of the time. So when I think about drawing Blue Cat, I pretty much always start with the ears. And that's kind of the reason there's a little line break between the ears and the head is because I would start with the ears and then if I messed that up, I would just erase it. Um, so I'd start there and then the bottom half of the head is actually the harder part. Um, so when I think about drawing his ears, I really, I start right here. 
And mind you, I am left-handed, so I might work backwards to how uh, um, someone right-handed might work. But when I draw Blue Cat, I start by going this way. And I go up the ears, and I go around, and I go back down. And that's like the first stroke. Next thing I do is the head. And what's really important here is what when he's facing left, you're trying to give a little bit of perspective. And you have one ear, and then you have the forehead. And what's really important is right here that the ear overlaps the forehead, or else you don't really get that perspective, as you can see here. It kind of, it's subtle, but you lose a little bit of it. And then opposite to that, with the next ear, you want to make sure it's behind the head. So just like the other ear, you go up and around. And you stop there. And so that's where I start first with Blue Cat. Um, and then what I think is the hardest part, but also the more important part, is the head. So when I come to draw cool Blue Cat's head, it's not just like a perfect circle, like a perfect round thing like that. What's really important is that you focus on this little bump right there, that little bump edge on Blue Cat's head. This is just over time how I I've always drawn him and what really started to solidify him as a character. So sometimes I will draw it to there and I'll stop. And then I kind of readjust myself and continue to draw this way. And I try my best to do it all in one stroke, although I know it's not the easiest to, because another way to do it, and sometimes I'll start from the back, is you can do it in strokes. But to me, the reason I don't like this is because it doesn't give you a really clean line. And the line work of Blue Cat is always what I kind of pride myself on and think makes the style of Blue Cat look like Blue Cat. Um, but as you can see there, it still works. Um, and the reason I'm tracing from a reference is to really give you an idea of like what the full thing looks like and how we break that down. So once we have the, the head of Blue Cat, now comes the face. And let me grab another color here so it's not confusing. When it comes to Blue Cat's face, what I often see done wrong is that people will put Blue Cat's eyes up here and his mouth down here. And normally, that's correct. I mean, that's how a face is. Your eyes are above your mouth. But for me, what really made Blue Cat my own character is breaking those rules. And so what's important to think about when you're drawing Blue Cat's face is that you kind of draw a line here. Well, let me draw that line a little bit better. You draw a line there and everything fits on that line. So let's go back to the blue. So when I draw this, it fits in that line. This fits in that line. And then the mouth is a little weird. It fits in the line, but we bump it down just a little bit. So you go right here and like that. And as you can see, the mouth is sort of like a bean shape. Um, that's always how I think about it. And I'll draw it over here. It's kind of like a bean, or like a bean. <laughs> that's always how I've seen it. And then the tongue just sort of comes in from the side right here. And then you draw it like that. And if I'm going too fast, don't worry. We're going to draw Blue Cat a few times here. So let me erase that. Let me just go all the way back, deleting all of that. And let's draw that again. So now with no line, but knowing it's all in a line, we'll draw that. The little bean. The tongue. And then the other eye. Now, the thing that... I forget a lot, some of the other artists on the team forget, but we're much better at it now, are the whiskers. You'll get going drawing Blue Cat, and sometimes thinking about the whiskers gets lost. Um, the whiskers also fall into the same line, you know, that same rule. And so, you know, if the line was right there, we draw a whisker there and a whisker there, and then do it on the opposite side. And Blue Cat's whiskers are on like the sides of his face. Um, but when he's facing to the 
to it. The left or the right, those whiskers are inside of his head and then the other side peek out. So that's quickly explaining how I used to draw Blue Cat, but I wanna take this now and let's draw the newer version of Blue Cat. This one I'm gonna take a little bit longer on because there's just been a lot of, of changes that have been made. Um, you know, proportions, I started thinking about how we can draw them using shapes. And this is really where circles start to come into play. So when drawing this version of Blue Cat, you wanna think about it in circles, well, kind of ovals. Um, and what I mean by that is you can start by making an oval like this. And I might have drawn that quickly, but I'll, I'll explain. Um, so typically I would draw it like a circle. I'll do it off to the side. And then I would take that circle and squish it. Um, because if I drew it like this, he starts to not have the right proportions. Um, and maybe that doesn't make sense, but let me take that back. So with Blue Cat's oval head, it starts to make all of the rules I just talked about already work. I drew the oval, and if you cut that oval in half, you get that line I was talking about, where all of the eyes, the whiskers, the mouth fall into. And when it comes to the ears, this is where I just kind of draw like another circle on top of the ears. And obviously none of this is perfect. It's like you kind of work with it over, you know, you, you mold it slowly. Um, because when it comes to the, like, a f like the line that goes on, the black line, that's where you start to really slowly, like, get the line work right. But when I'm in sketching phase, I like to be a lot quicker. So when I take this, I can give you another color. So this makes a little bit more sense. Let's draw it with red. We start to draw the ears like I talked about, where they round out. And you're using, you're using the circles and the oval as your reference to do the curve. And so it really makes sense when you're coming down to the face. And that oval almost immediately becomes your reference point where you can just slowly draw on top. And then we'll finish off the ear. And then do the forehead. And as you can see, a lot of that falls with the oval. And if I get rid of that under sketch, it looks very clean. It worked out. But it's good to have that as a reference point. And let me try that again without any of this so that it really makes sense. And I'll try my best. Hopefully I do it perfect. So you draw the oval. Okay. And once you have your oval, then you draw your circles. I'll grab my new layer, new color. And as you can see, none of this is perfect. But when you start to do your next layer and your next layer, this is when you start working out some of those kinks. So there's an ear there. There's an ear there. And then you just follow the bottom of that oval. And they have a pretty good looking blue cat head. And then from there, you know, going back, you draw your center point. I think I did that on the wrong layer. Draw your center point, pull out the red, and this is where you draw your mouth and then your whiskers. And so that center point, again, I'm going to keep referencing it really is like the best guideline for drawing all of this. Because when I get rid of that, you have a nice looking blue cat head. Um, and so we'll go back to how we to what we had before. 
And let me start completely over and do it one more time because I think it doesn't hurt to explain it over and over again. That's sort of how you draw cartoon characters. It's just a lot of repetition until you get to a point where your muscle memory just knows it, where I don't have to do any of these ovals or circles or whatever. I can just freehand blue cat. Um, and so, but I like to do it because it, it really gives you a nice guide. Do that one more time. Draw your center point. And draw your circles. And then I'm going to continue doing this on the same layer. This is where I start to fill it out more, work out some of the edges I didn't like. And then now that you have this, this is where I like to do the line work. And I'll, I'll get rid of the, the under sketch so that I can, can show you how I do this. So this right here to me is like the most important guideline bones to it. And I'll take my brush. And like I said, I always like starting with the ears. So I go up. And in this part, I like to take my time. I like to really go slow make sure I pick up my brush sometimes when I'm like at a curve that I can't fully complete the way I wanted to. And I just keep going slowly and making sure that you get it right. And this part can be really therapeutic. And I think the reason why I love line work so much is you just take it really slow. There's no rush, there's no deadlines. Just drawing some ears. Nice. That is a good looking blue cat silhouette. And now that we have the bones, the guidelines, that middle line, we can I will sometimes start with the mouth because the mouth is in the center and it makes it easier to draw the mouth and then the eyes to get the right spacing. So I'll, because I know the mouth actually sits just a little bit below, I'll draw the mouth right here. And draw that bean shape. Okay. And sometimes I'll overlap and just erase what I like, what I want gone on that overlap. Draw the tongue, fill it in. And then the eyes are really just ovals. It's just like drawing an oval. And here's a little hint. I'll do it occasionally too. But sometimes if I'm feeling lazy or if I'm having a hard time, I'll just take the same eye and bring it over here. <laughs> There's no harm in that. Um, I've definitely done it before. Uh, when you're drawing something with a lot of symmetry, it you can usually get away with it. But I'll go ahead and draw it. And then we draw the whiskers. Yeah, and then we have a nice looking blue cat head. It's a little wonky, but you know, you kind of work with that as you go. So bringing this back, now that we have the blue cat head right here, it's good to draw the blue cat head with the body. Um, and now that you know how to draw the blue cat head, a lot of this should be easy. You have your head right here. And really all you're doing when it comes to drawing the lower body is just, first of all, erasing this line right here because it's no longer just his head. It's his head with just a 
tiniest bit of neck. And Blue Cat doesn't really have a neck, but when he's wearing a shirt, he kind of needs a neck, or else it doesn't read correctly. So then, instead of drawing this just you know, perfectly to the other side, I'll take it to right here to where I think the shirt should start, and I dip even lower. And that creates that neckline right here. And that's really important when you want to put clothing on blue, um, blue cat. Um, and with his shoulders, he doesn't really have broad shoulders, you know, a lot of definition. I'll sometimes explain blue cat as very tube-like. Um, and so we'll just round his shoulders down. And I get to, I, I know you can't see it because I've cropped his body, but I get to about a little bit below halfway where that rectangle is, where I think his elbow is about to start. And so I stop there and I just bring this in. And then we'll do it on the other side as well. So we'll go really sloped. Blue Cat has a very round body. Get to that halfway point and then bring that in. And then because of how bodies work, or at least how I draw it, his arms are at his side, and then you have this like front chest part right here, and that's where these lines come in. And so I'll do it correctly on this side, but the incorrect way to do it is to keep going with this line and go in like that. Because then if you draw it there, you're, well actually it kind of looks like he's facing this way now, but if he's facing straight forward, it looks like this arm is kind of sitting on top of his chest and it doesn't really work well. So we'll draw that line going straight down because this is in front of his arms and then we'll just finish off the arms right here. And then for the rectangle, the graphic on his T, it's just simply a rectangle. And I make sure there's just a little bit of area right here in between. Um, because if it's right up to his neck, it doesn't make sense. And it's too low, it kind of becomes a square. Blue Cat's really not that tall in the first place. So I quickly did that because now we're going to take that, everything that we've learned, and apply it to a full body. And this time we're going to do a pose because there's a lot I want to explain about how the arms work. So let's take our drawing layer, let's delete it all. And then let's now try to draw the full body. And I am starting all the way from the back, uh, or all the way back from where we started. You know, I'm just kind of trying to remind you about the steps I think about when drawing Blue Cat. So let's zoom in real quick. So when it comes to Blue Cat, We'll draw the head like we did with the circles, and we'll do the neckline, the sloped shoulders. But before we get there, let me kind of just explain the body of Blue Cat. I mentioned a second ago that he's very tube-like. Um, when you think about how human arms work, there's taper. Like, let's draw a shoulder right here. Well, maybe this, is, this doesn't, but there, <laughs> I'm realizing this doesn't make sense off to the side. Let me completely erase blue cat. So if we had a human head and then the body, let's just use squares and stuff. A human arm has a lot of like taper to it. And taper is like how it, it goes in and out and how you have like I don't know how to explain this, uh, where, you know, you have his wrist right here and it bulges because of muscles. You have an elbow here and then it kind of bulges again because of muscles. Blue Cat doesn't have muscles. He's pretty, he's pretty, like I said, tube like. So let's go all the way back. And when I think about Blue Cat, it's really just like, think about rectangles, like, there's no taper. He doesn't have calves or muscles or any of that. Um, and so when I draw his arms, it also kind of just like bends because he's like, it, 
he doesn't really have the bones that I don't think about those rules when I'm drawing blue cat. Um, so all of this is to explain when you draw blue cat, don't think about it needing to be correct to how you draw a human. Think about it just drawing a cartoon character where you can start with a rectangle and if you wanted to draw the peace sign, you can draw that rectangle, a circle for the joint, and then another rectangle like this. And now you, you have that hinge. And so then you do that. You can draw the t-shirt like this, and then just erase some of those features. And now you, you have what we're about to draw. So anyways, I might have gone down a rabbit hole explaining that, but I hope a little bit of that made sense. Because when we start to draw Blue Cat and his arms and everything, we'll draw his head like we have, where we draw the circle. I always say circle. It's an oval. Oop, let me try that again. We have that. Draw a circle there. Draw a circle there. And normally I've been drawing the, the line going straight down his face, exactly in the middle of his head. But for this reference, he's facing to the side. So really we need to show off that his head is actually round. And so we draw a little bit of a curve to show that his face is rounded. I don't think that'll really matter for how we draw it. I draw it pretty flat, but I do it because then it starts to influence the rest of his body. Where now I can continue that line and make sure I have the center drawn. And I know it doesn't quite line up, but that's for artistic reasons. So you draw that. And then you can continue to have that line straight in the middle. And then for his, how I draw his body, I don't think about the arms for a second. Just think about the torso. And I just draw like a rectangle. So I just draw that. And I do this just to nail down the proportions. And I pretty much take that same rectangle and do it again down here. But I separate them into two rectangles. And if you haven't picked up already, I try to use shapes as much as possible when drawing characters because it really makes it easy to draw them again. If you can break something down into shapes and make it as easy as possible. So I have those. I have his everything kind of as rectangles. If I was to draw his arms straight down, I would do that slope and then have rectangles right there. You know, rectangle right there. And a good rule of thumb is that you want his, his arms, his like fingers, you know, if this is where his thumb is, you want that to kind of line up to where like the bottom of his shirt is. But that's if we're drawing him straight on. For this example, we're trying to draw him doing a peace sign, the iconic peace sign that Blue Cat always does. So if I was to take that sort of rectangle that I drew, drew it there, and then I draw a circle for where I want that joint to be, and then I draw another rectangle we start to get that shape and then a, a circle for the hand. So on the other side, draw a rectangle. Circle for the joint. We'll draw another rectangle. and then another circle. And because there's a lot of things overlapping here, this is where I'll go back in with an eraser 
and start to get rid of the lines that I don't need anymore. So now that we've drawn basically the, the outline of Blue Cat's arm, we can start to get rid of everything else. Oh, deleted the wrong line there. You know, you always have to think about perspective. You know, I wouldn't erase this line because it's not like his arm is on top of his torso facing this direction. So you'd want to erase this line instead. And then erase his elbow, or the circle for his elbow. And then like that. So now you can you kind of have the, the arms correct because if I was to just start by drawing that, there's a chance I might get it wrong and I get the proportions wrong and then I have to delete all of that. And usually you spend more time doing that. Whereas if I draw it this way, I've spent less time drawing it and I can generally see that I like where these proportions are. And so when it comes to the legs, you know, his legs are straight right now, but the same sort of thing applies where you get to that halfway point and you visualize where his knees are and then you continue it down. And then I always draw his feet as ovals instead. And for this oval, it's facing forward. You know, you're messing with that perspective here. So one oval is facing to the side, one oval is facing forward. Um, but you use an oval to kind of like, you know, rotate it and kind of see which way you want his foot to face. Um, but in this case, now you can go in and start erasing those, you know, connection points or whatever. And you start to get a really nice outline of Blue Cat. Yeah, it's looking great. So let's put a bit of an outline on here now. I think we're definitely at that stage. And so this is where you, you know, maybe you're not drawing this version of Blue Cat. Maybe you're drawing your own version of Blue Cat or, a, you know, a made up version of Blue Cat with different clothes. Um, now that you have this, you're really kind of just drawing on top of that. Um, but for this example, I'll draw him with the yellow shirt. So we'll take him here. Ooh, that's. And just, you know, we, we've done all of the hard work in my eyes. You know, we've done the circles so that it makes the ears do a lot easier. Just go around. And don't forget to overlap the ear from his head because he's facing a certain angle. We start there on the top of the oval. And then draw the other ear behind it. And I didn't mention it before, but always draw blue cat's ears rounded. You know, most cats have pretty pointy ears. How blue cat differs is by having the rounded ears. And so we'll continue this. Remember that face bump. It's kind of like a, an immediate angle change right there. And when I draw his full body, I usually stop there and I'll go to the other side and then draw the back of his head and round that out. And because this isn't just his head, we're not gonna complete the head. We're gonna go down a little bit and dip a little bit further to create that neckline. Then we got his shoulders. And typically I draw his shirt right where it cuts off on that joint where the elbow is. And I like for the shirt to kind of go below where his arm is to show a little bit of that bagginess like cloth gives. So we'll draw like that. And then we'll draw his torso of his shirt right there. Go in. And sometimes I'll just stop 
of a line where it is because I want to draw what I think is above it first before just completing it. Um, and although this rectangle right here is very edgy, we know Blue Cat has very soft shoulders. So we'll just softly do that. And we have that elbow right there. So we'll draw that. And then kind of like the armpit because this is overlapping his torso. And then we'll draw it down like this, and down like this. Um, and we haven't really gotten much to his hands yet. And hands are something I don't typically like to draw, but you have to draw. Um, and so with his hands, let me draw this off to the side. Because I kind of have to draw them a little bit differently. Um, so with his hands, I also start with an oval, you know, common theme here if you haven't picked up already. Um, and then you cut that in half, just like his head, and then you draw a square on top of it. But because fingers aren't just perfectly flat, you actually want this square to kind of mimic the oval and have the top part of it be a little rounded. And so that's because we'll draw one finger here, the middle finger being the longest right there, and then another finger right there. And depending on which way his hand is facing, we'll just draw a thumb like that. And the thumb kind of fits in the middle. You know, the oval that we made is really the palm. And so that when we finish this, yeah, you have a nice looking hand. Hands are a weird thing to draw, but really if you break it down into shapes, like a lot of this, you know, when you start erasing what your guideline was, you start to get the actual shape of it. So, as you can see. So, that's how we typically draw hands, and he only has three fingers, not, not four like the rest of us, but that's what makes him special. So we'll go back to our brush here. Oop, wrong layer. And actually, I'll do, I'll do this. So if I could imagine that there's this oval here, and you're imagining that's there, you draw the thumb, you draw the first finger, and remember there's, a, there's an arc to it. So this one's a little bit longer and then it goes back up and finishes out right there. And so where his peace sign comes in, um, this one's definitely muscle memory for me. I don't ever really think about breaking this down, but you draw this, you know, we'll draw the rest of his arm right here to prep. And then his thumb kind of folds in. And I really, you know, I, I guess in my head, I think of it like when you do an at symbol and you just whoop, you just go, <laughs> sound effects included, um, you go around. I really think of his thumb as like this portion right here where you're kind of going around and spiraling back in. And that's to get the little thumb, you know, folded in look. Um, and then from there, you're just drawing the fingers as is. One, two, and you can kind of see there's just a tiny bit of arc there. And then the last finger just folds in similar to the thumb, but angled differently. Um, and normally they would overlap, but Blue Cat's fingers are kind of far from each other. So I never really make them touch. I just kind of have them bend in close to each other. So now that we have that, this is looking great. Um, before we get into all the details, like the face and the rectangle on the shirt, I usually like to draw everything. So let's get to his pants. This is probably the easier part because it really is just going straight down. Um, but I like to make sure that I have that little bump where the t-shirt is and the pants start 
Um, and this just makes the shirt feel like it really is on top of the pants. So we'll just go straight down. Straight down. And we're just using those guidelines that we made before. Okay. And then I like to add a little bit of like a cuff to Blue Cat's pants. Um, you know, Blue Cat really is, for a while, was just me, and I'm someone who loves to cuff his pants. So Blue Cat gets that too. Um, and with this, similar rule to how I like to do the t-shirt on top of the pants, I like to give it that just little bit of, of bump outside of the pants. And this really gives you that cuff look. that up and really this is just another rectangle just another long rectangle that sits on top of the pants and now for the feet blue cat used to wear shoes until I realized I didn't like drawing shoes that much and so he just goes around barefoot now um, and so you know, if you're imagining that his legs are inside of this, and maybe it makes more sense for me to sketch this, you know, if his legs were inside of this, his legs wouldn't be, you know, right up against where we just made that outline. They'd be just like a little bit inside of that, you know, and that's why his like, it kind of starts right there. Um, so let's actually draw that, you know, I, if I was to go straight down, and then start there and follow that sort of oval pattern that we had before, you know, and just flatten it out on the bottom instead of making it bow out. You know, then we get his foot. That's typically how I draw feet when it comes to these characters. Um, it's really just that kind of, kind of look, you know, you got the, the front of the foot, the toes, and then you have, you can't forget about the heel, um, or else it'd kind of look like a boot if I did it this way. You know, th there's characters that might get that, but Blue Cat has that little bit of bump on, on the back. But what is there is it's flat on the bottom because he's standing. So now let's draw the other foot, which is a little bit more difficult because when you're drawing something flat at an angle or flat you know like we did with the other foot it kind of makes more sense but this foot is now facing you so you have to think about perspective in that you know you're drawing all the same things but facing you and so we're, we're still gonna have his his legs you know be a little bit inside of that but really there's not much we have to do we're just following that that oval shape and with this I don't really like to flatten it out too much on the bottom because it's facing towards you and your toes kind of like you know go uh, what am I trying to say you know they're like like that you know if it was like that it wouldn't have that same same thing that we discussed with the hands where it's not just flat there's actually like a curve to it and so the same thing applies with the bottom foot there's just like that little bit of curve to it and then i add just a little line there to kind of you know fill in the gap that this is facing you um, and i'll do that a lot as you'll see so i think now we can um you know, we started with this little outline and we were able to trace the majority of that to get this look, which is pretty dang accurate. And so now it's really just the details and this is up to you. Maybe you don't want to draw the rectangle on Blue Cat's shirt um, or the face like we've drawn it. Um, you know, I will draw these little lines here to just kind of 
give the the look of clothes kind of folding in and out um, it looks a little less flat by doing that but maybe um, you want to draw blue cat's face different you know blue cat has a lot of different expressions um, maybe you want to draw him shocked so let's get that reference back you know we'll, we're still following most of the same rules when it comes to drawing different faces but maybe we want to draw the shocked face and so the shocked face his eyes are more of like circles <laughs> um, and so you draw circles like that. And then his mouth is sort of just like a trapezoid. Um, but the same things apply. You know, his mouth is a little bit lower than his eyes. It follows on that, that center line. Um, his tongue kind of just starts there. And I clicked something. There we go. Okay, and then you just fill that in. And maybe with this time, you know, his whiskers, um, because he's shocked, you want to express them more. And so you can, like, angle them more to look more shocked. You know, it kind of it adds to the expression. Although, I guess he wouldn't be shocked if he was giving a peace sign. So let's make him look a little bit cooler. So let's give him like a little smirk or something. And then his eyes aren't, you know, totally round, you know, they're like half. So we just add, just kind of cut off those. And then basically just trace what we already drew to give him that little bit of smirk, like Blue Cat knows he's cool. Um, you don't have to tell him. He just he's got that smirk to him. You know, he's full of full of emotions, full of range. Um, you know, maybe he has like I don't know, fire on his shirt. What's cool? <laughs> a skull or something, but really that shirt is just a blank template to do whatever you want on and we can get rid of the reference there and that reference and you know you could have your own version of blue cat however you want to draw him um but last thing that we haven't touched on um is the color palette so blue cat's color palette and now i'm realizing that this flame we're going to draw the flame as if it's the rectangle on his shirt um but blue cat really only is four colors when you break it down um, he's just the blue, the yellow, the cream color for his shirt, and then the green pants. Um, he's, he's pretty simple. And so we can just have fun coloring this in. I'll draw, I'll usually paint by painting the outlines. Just the edges of it. And then I'll switch the paint bucket tool and just fill that in. Now, there's other programs out there. I think Procreate is better at it where you can just drop that bucket in and you don't have to do this tedious, you know, coloring around the edges. But you just fill in the arms, both arms. We'll fall fill in his legs or his feet okay and then fill all those in we'll grab the yellow here oh I didn't get the last one but I did grab the yellow the cream and I usually go in this order where I do the blue first then the yellow 
then the cream, and then the green. And there's no, you don't have to go in order. Um, the nice thing about drawing with outlines is that you just have to color within the outline. Um, we're not really layering colors on top of each other, which if we were, I would think a little bit differently on how I'm layering all of this. The blue cat's pretty easy. He doesn't have many colors to him. Um, and then his eyes, I guess I don't include white as a color, um, but his eyes are just white. Just a perfect white. Um, and that's it. That's how you draw blue cat. Give him a smirk with a flame on his shirt. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I didn't go too fast, but you know, luckily you can rewind if you need to. Um, I think now is a great time. If anybody has any questions that they want answered, um, you want me to redo anything, I'm here. So I'll start reading chat now. I was trying to stay pretty focused on the tutorial aspect of this. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. Um, but I had fun drawing that. I haven't, you know, it, it's interesting to think about how you break down the character you draw so much um, because after a certain point, it really is all muscle memory and you're not thinking about kind of the steps I was talking about earlier about drawing the circles and all of that. You can just kind of freehand into it. Um, and that's that's the enjoyment I love with drawing your own character. Um, it's just that freedom to draw them however. Um, and I would love one day to show you how I can draw them on pencil and paper because um, I, I could totally freehand that and that's how I used to draw them all the time. Um, do you have Procreate? If so, can you show us a comparable brush um, to use in Procreate to draw your own blue cat? So that's funny that you say that. Um, I think we were thinking about getting the um, our official brush out there now, now that we're kind of shifting what we're doing with animation, because this brush doesn't work that well with animation. Um, so not confirming that yet, but that might be the possibility soon. Um, but to answer your question, um, I don't really use Procreate, so I'm not sure but I know they have like a rough brush that you can use um, because really what you're looking for is, you know, you can have, you can use a brush that's perfect, um, you know, perfect on the edges. It doesn't have any of like the, you know, bumpiness to it where mine does. Cause when I, when I designed this brush, I was trying to mimic the brush, the like literal pen that I use in real life. Um, I will say what's probably the most important when you're drawing in Procreate is, and how can I demonstrate this quickly? Um, I can, here, I'll erase. I'll, I'll fake what I'm trying to say. Um, typically, when you use like a new software, um, most artists draw this way and that's why, but the brush will look like this, where it starts off thin, goes wide, and then goes thin again. And that's because of pressure sensitivity. Um, with me, I turned off all pressure sensitivity. I want the beginning and the end of the stroke to be the exact width the entire time. Because I don't usually work with tapers. Um, you know, it works well when you're like sketching or something. So. In Procreate, if you, I do know this part, if you go to um, like the pressure sensitivity, they give you a little graph. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly uh, sketch this graph. Uh, and then there's like this line that's here. And it has like a center point or something. Um, what I do, and I'll draw in green here, is I take that dot and I push it as close to this corner as possible. So I go up this way, and that essentially turns off all pressure sensitivity so that when you draw, you're drawing just like, just like this and not like the other one. So it doesn't fully answer your question, um, but it definitely helps to not have any pressure sensitivity. Um, you use mono smooth inker. Ooh, okay, cool. From Retro Supply, and you love it. 
Oh, I guess that's a, a another thing you can do is there's definitely plenty of libraries online um, of brushes that you can use. And I typically type in, you know, Photoshop brushes and look for Photoshop brushes, but um, you could probably look for Procreate ones too. Luckily, Procreate does accept all Photoshop brushes. So you can really expand what you're looking for by you know, searching either result. Uh, maybe just in general, it's, it's digital brushes. Um, but yeah, so that was fun. Um, hope that helped. And next time, we're going to be drawing chugs, which isn't as complex as, as Blue Cat. Chugs is definitely a lot easier to draw than, than Blue Cat. Um, chugs is really just a box. Um, a box with some spots on it and the easiest, most adorable face in the world. Um, Taimo, you like that one because it avoids the skinny fat issue like Klon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that kind of term is either typically called just like pressure sensitivity or tapering. So um, you can also look for that when you're searching for it. Um, but yeah, I think that's all the questions we had, unless anyone, uh, any training or warm up exercises you'd recommend? Absolutely, I'm glad that you asked. Um, you know, when I, and I do this, actually I guess I do this on digital too. It's so simple, but what can help out a lot uh, when you're trying to draw for the first, like I haven't, I don't draw digitally that much anymore. I'm actually doing a lot with pencil and paper, but either way, this still applies. I want to like, as you saw, we drew a lot of ovals. We drew a lot of circles. So sometimes I'll just, you know, just keep drawing circles until like, you know, maybe I slow it down. I'm trying to get those circles perfect and to like get really good at closing the circle. Slowly and slowly. <laughs> and then typically I, I go smaller. Um, you don't need to go smaller, but I'm just trying to really warm up my hand. And then maybe I go the other way. Maybe I, you know, I was going counterclockwise now I'm going clockwise you know I just draw a bunch of circles and this is strictly just to warm up my hand to get used to drawing circles um, and then you can change the shape that you want maybe I want to draw triangles now you know I'll draw them you know at different angles well, that's not that's not a triangle <laughs> You know, maybe I draw squares. But this is how I like to warm up a lot. It just really helps. And then something I really, I've always loved doing, you can do digitally, but it takes a little bit of self-control or, you know, is that I like to start drawing something. Like I'll draw like a weird shape and then I'll start like making it into a character or something um, slowly. I'm just doing my typical, uh, honestly, this is like chugifying. And just uh, slowly start to draw something weird, like don't, the reason that this is part of the warm up is drawing something weird oh, is um, you're not trying to think about the end result. Like, obviously, this looks weird, um, but it kind of got me started. Um, and now that might make, lead me into something else or whatever. Um, but I like to just start drawing a picture. Um, staring at a blank page can be uh, the biggest, like, or like the scariest most daunting thing when you just have nothing on the page and you're you're expected to just start um another thing i'll typically do is set rules for myself um so maybe the rule is that 
I'm only allowed to use circles to make a character, or I can only use two to three colors, or I can't pick up my brush the entire time, or you know, whatever rules you want to make for yourself. Rules can help out a lot. Uh, when you're warming up or if you're doing a final product because it'll help you with the blank page and getting past that and just getting started with something. Um, most times if you are started drawing, you know, you start drawing something, um, your brain starts to expand on that and starts to think of new ideas. And those new ideas can really inspire something even better. And then that inspiration turns into just like, full on creativity and drawing and like something you're really involved in. So, uh, want to get better at drawing shapes without relying on that. Yeah. 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 Um, you can, you can use the perfect shape tool. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, like never think here's even better suggestion. Never think there's the like correct way of doing something or if you do it a certain way that people will think it's, you know, less. But um, I have so many times just drawn a circle if, you know, I can't figure it out. If I, if I need it to be a perfect circle, let's say I'm drawing the moon or something, um, I will definitely, this is how I work. I'll never use the perfect circle, but I will trace the perfect circle. Um, and this can be another great tool of getting better is is tracing things like this because then you start to get your your muscle memory down. You know, you can make a little crescent like that. Um, and this is really you know similar to today's tutorial. I was drawing from a reference of Blue Cat, a because I thought it would help illustrate what we were doing a little bit better, but b it's it helps me expand off of it and, and, you know, adapt and do new things. So there's nothing wrong from, from, uh, tracing. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any other questions. Otherwise I think today's tutorial was a success and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm really excited to keep drawing the other characters and sort of, uh, describing my thought process through it all. So yeah. Um, I guess I'll end it here and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later, everybody.